Another important part of this has to do with native plants and native pollinators. And I was just talking to one of my cohorts, the botanist who works with these national forests out in Utah in the last week, and we're doing this best management practice thing for the foresters, for pollinators. And we were both exclaiming how many times we've seen news about pollinators now. It's in the scientific journals. Dan Rather did something the other day on TV. It's in the popular journals, it's in newspapers, it's everywhere, and it's not good. It is way not good. They provide us with an essential ecosystem service, pollinators, whether it's honeybees or bumblebees or the hundreds and hundreds of other types of pollinators, bees, flies, wasps, all of them. And that pollination is it. Without them, we lose about 80% of our food every third bite. We can't do without them. We really can't. We are losing our ability to keep honeybees, which are non-natives but very useful to us, uh, in these commercial environments. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we're losing the wild pollinators too, which incorporate a huge amount. So, cut to the chase. The gardens serve that purpose with the native plants that are incorporated in there. The gardens um, <clears throat> are also enhanced as the native pollinators spend part of their time on those native plants in that garden while the, f uh, the fruits and vegetables are still producing. We want pollinators to be there when the squash blossoms are blossoming. And they won't be there unless there's something else to keep them there. Um, and, you know, the proof of that is some of these scenarios now where people are brought in, people are brought in commercially with paint brushes to pollinate apples. Can you imagine that? Pollinate apple trees in China. Why? Because it's the only way they're going to get pollinated. They're not wind pollinated, they're pollinated by insects. And when, when uh, Jan said to, said to us, you know, these church gardens need to have a poll they need to be pollinator gardens, like with butterflies and, and milkweed, and I thought, wow, now here's a connection for you, where our congregational gardens or faith gardens become the pollinator gardens for everybody else's garden. It's threatened. It's, it's, it's being threatened. It really is. It really is being threatened. So there's an incredible yeah. moment of opportunity for us to really be, contribute something beautiful. It, it really is true. And, you know, these pollinating insects do not require large home ranges like a lynx or a, or a wolf. We're talking little. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking real little. You know, a place for ground nesting bees or bees that live in, you know, the seams of rotting trees, whatever, um, and other insects. They, the requirements are very simplistic, but they, you know, they, they need that. It's just a simple set aside uh, with native plants. Native plants are the food that these insects have evolved with. This is, you know, they get all their vitis and all their important nutrients. So when we give them something else, it might be all right for part of the time, but it doesn't provide a healthy population. The other part of that, so that native plants that these things evolve with, that's, that's important. The identification of them and putting them there. 